All right, got a band on? How did you like that opening up the band? I didn't throw it in the grass or the dirt or something else. I just opened the band up. And I don't even coil my bands normally, folks. <laughs> I've seen lots of videos of guys just tossing their bands out and letting them open up that way. And I just opened that one up nice and easy. So kudos to me because I never do it. <laughs> All right, we're gonna get this log milled up. We're gonna turn it into a D-log. I've already got it clamped in place from before. So I'll check my clamps, make sure everything's set. And I'm gonna draw out real quick what I'm gonna do so I can show it to you. Let's take a look. All right, folks, we're gonna turn this into a D-log. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come three inches below the pith, approximately there. And we're gonna go three inches above the pith, approximately here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this off. Then we're gonna rotate it 90 degrees, which will put this end up. And we'll take this off so that we've got seven and a half inches to here. Then we'll rotate it back. We'll take that off, make three turns, we'll be good to go. Let's get started, it's raining. Like it? I took a cue from Mike Wilson. Actually, I decided I really needed to get one of these anyway. And Mike always talks about how it's great when it's raining. 
he gets a little drop on his hat and he hears it and it feels good and it doesn't get his head wet. I gotta peel this log now, so real quick, it only took me a few minutes to cut this D-log, but now I gotta peel it, so let's get to it. These ponderosa pines make a hell of a mess when you peel them, folks. <laughs> that thick red bark just goes everywhere. Helps if you use your draw knife properly. This one was a bit fresher than the last one though, so it's peeling a lot easier. Which is nice. And since I decided to do it on the mill, it's definitely made life easier, folks. It's also getting close to bug season, so it's really important to get this bark off early. Let this log start drying out early. Good start to the day though. Got the alternator fixed. Everything is running good. Uncoiled a band without throwing it. <laughs> Come on Rick and Tim over at Two Brothers Outdoors. You don't gotta throw bands. I know a lot of guys do. I don't normally have them coiled, so maybe it's different for me, I don't know. Since it's raining and I'm running out of daylight, I'm actually gonna leave this log on the mill tonight. And then tomorrow, after I fill up my tractor, I'll go ahead and move it. It's only clamped loosely, but it probably should back off more so I can push the log around. It's dirty work, folks. Not something you want to do in yoga pants. <laughs> yes, I'm breathing heavy. <laughs> After peeling about a hundred more of these, I should be in shape. It's a good workout. There's John over it. Davidson's all-natural gym would say come on out you don't need a gym come out and do this you'll get in shape <laughs> you can come out and do this for free you don't even got to pay somebody you get free workout better than any of that newfangled stuff of course if you're watching me still you probably believe that. <laughs> you're either doing it or you're planning on it. Probably don't have to worry about removing as much as I do, but I just like to try and get as much off as I can without working too hard. It'll come off more later. But the more of this you peel off, the less attractive it is to bugs. And you're thinking, Eric, I thought this was a D-log milling video. <laughs> well, yeah, but you gotta do this too. Sooner or later. Easier to do green than dry. I think I earned my dinner. I haven't decided if I'm gonna have a pork chop for dinner or steak. What do you guys think? Put it in the comments. Sirloin steak or pork chop? Both seasoned well. I think the sirloin's already been smoked. I just gotta finish it. And folks, I might even have a bourbon. Haven't had a lot of that lately because I've been fighting some stomach troubles. There we go. All right. Now if I can only find what I did with my battery box cover uh, screws. I found a washer. The problem out here, folks, is there are pack rats. If you leave things loose, they're gonna find them. And I think that could be what happened. 
my rest to get out of here and I didn't put them back on. So I've got plenty of wing nuts at home, but uh, it's kind of annoying. It'll stay there like it is. I mean, as long as you're not traveling, which I don't plan on doing unless uh, Shanico Ghost Town calls me and wants me to come out and make some boardwalk for him. All right, I think we got it. We'll lift that log up off the deck. And that way it'll be ready for tomorrow when I get the tractor over here. And it can sit up a little higher and breathe. Maybe it'll stay up like that all night. All right. Well, folks, it's almost five o'clock. So I got more light than I thought I was going to. There you have it. One six inch D log. Let's see how long that one is. I'm guessing 10 feet. So it's a bit shorter than what I've been milling. Maybe 12. Look at that, 12, nine. Boy, I was way off. You know, the one mistake I made was I had one end lifted to center the pith. I always do that. But when I rolled it 90, I probably should have dropped it, cut it at seven and a half, rotated it back left it flat and cut it. And so I would say that was the one error that I made. It's still gonna work. It's just a little bit smaller. I like them seven and a half. It's between seven and six and a half. But I did mention that I'm probably gonna build a little shed. Probably perfect for that. So either way, I'm happy with it. Got it done. Three cuts, you're done. Honestly, once you get rolling, and I haven't been rolling in a while, <laughs> once you get rolling on D-logs, you get it down and it's just, Get it up, cut, 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 get it off the deck. Well, peel it, then get it off the deck. But uh, they go pretty quick. So the key is actually having enough logs to mill. I need, uh, oh, for that structure there, which is the addition on the cabin, I need about 35 more logs, I think 32 or something like that. But I always want to cut over because I know some of them are just not going to stay straight. You know, it's just the nature of the beast. Some aren't going to dry good. It is what it is, especially with these smaller ponderosa pines. I do find that whether they're boxed hearts or free of heart center, they twist on me sometimes. And if I look around me, I see trees that aren't growing real straight. And if a tree doesn't grow straight, well, it tends to not dry straight. That's just the nature of the beast. Of course, you can strap them down, put weight on them, all that kind of stuff. But I think for a log cabin structure, it'll be fine for the most part. And because I'm cutting them at six inches, I may actually cut them all down to five and a half before I go and use them. I know that's a bit crazy, but I have learned that if I cut them over and they twist a little bit, I can go back in, knock them down to five and a half, which is the standard, you know, six inch dimensional lumber width would be five and a half inches, not six. So it'll actually work out in terms of measuring your height of your walls and all that kind of stuff. So that's probably what I'm gonna end up doing. It will be extra work. If I was using them green, I'd leave them all six inches and screw them down right away green, but I'm not, I'm letting them dry simply because of time. I just, I've got to get a lot of them done. I've got uh, the, the addition and I need, I think I figured about 64 logs to do the addition, probably gonna to try to mill about 75 or 80 so that I've got extra just in case. And then over there, I plan on building I catch movement out of the corner of my eye and I always got to look, especially when you're out here alone. So I've got the addition and then I'm going to build a 14 by 14 cabin to my left over here above the privy. And that's going to be one of the guest cabins. So that's my next one and that'll probably need another 64 logs. So I've still got hundred logs to mill. I've got lots of logs that have to come down for forest fire protection. So it shouldn't be an issue with me getting logs. I just got to get to it. I will say, my back's doing pretty good. My arm's doing pretty good. <laughs> so if you've been watching my channel, you know this old jarhead's busted up. Well, well. All right, well, we got that six inch D-log milled up, got it peeled, got all that done. Heck, we got the alternator fixed earlier. I will tell you, I had a little bit of a problem with my lube bottle. I wasn't getting any lube and my tape measure just fell on the ground. Oh, well. But um, my lube wasn't working real good. However, on my last live, Rob kicked in 
a nice super sticker for me to pay for a gallon of diesel, he said. <laughs> so guess what, Rob? I went out and I spent 20 bucks on a little oiler because I didn't have one, and I'm gonna put some diesel in it now. It will be red diesel. That's what I happen to have out here. So it'll be interesting to see whether or not that works. And according to John over at Davidson's All Natural Gym, windshield washer fluid burns better than diesel. I think I'm gonna try to see if that works this weekend. So anyway, folks, if you like these videos, if you get anything out of them, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button down below. It really helps me out. And I really appreciate it if you do. Thank you very much for that. Listen, folks, I'm gonna drop another video right here for you to check out. Y'all have a great day. The old jarhead out.